This lesson is on polynomial inequalities. Now the steps are going to feel the same as quadratic inequalities because a quadratic is a polynomial. So we'll start with a quadratic and so step one remember that you have to set the inequality to zero and don't forget to write the inequality that matters so we're going to move this 15 over to the left side so it'll become a minus 15 and we have less than zero. Step two is to factor and this quadratic if it factors is going to factor into two trinomials. Most of the time the problems we give you these will factor but um, occasionally you'll have to use a quadratic formula. We did that last unit. But anyway the factors of two are two and one, two 2x and 1x and then the factors of 15, 1 and 15, 3 and 5 and because this isn't x and x we have to check the outer and the inner terms and we have to guess and check. We always check the numbers that are close together. They're going to need to subtract to be 1. So let's try a 3 here and a 5 here. Okay so that gives you 6x and 5x and they certainly certainly do subtract to give you 1. Now to get a negative 1 we're going to play with the signs. We want the 6 to be negative and the 5 to be positive. So the, the negative 6 comes from 2x and 3 so the negative goes with the 3 and the plus will go with the 5. So step 2 is to factor. Now remember step 3 is just kind of like taking a time out. It says less than 0 and we're going to do that but first we need to find the zeros because those were si that's where the sign changes occur. So we're going to set 2x plus 5 equal to 0 and x minus 3 equal to 0 and you get 2x equals negative 5 divide by 2 and you get x is equal to negative 5 and x is equal to 3. These are my zeros and so now I have everything I need and I'll draw a number line. So that's the next step is you draw a number line and that's when you're going to analyze this less than zero. Less than zero means negative numbers. So we're going to put the zeros on the number line and we have to decide open circles on these zeros or close. It says less than zero. It doesn't say equal to zero so we can't include these zeros because that's where it equals zero. And um, we can do some sign analysis or you can graph. I'm going to do sign analysis. What I'm going to do is let a number to the left of negative 5 halves represent all the numbers to the left of negative 5 halves. They will all behave the same way and I'm going to put it into this factored form here so I can just check the sign. So if I put a negative 4 in here that's negative 8 plus 5 that's negative 3. So this is a negative and then if I put a negative 4 in here, that's negative 7. So a negative number times a negative number is a positive. So every number, every x value to the left of negative 5 halves is going to give you a positive y value. Now we'll pick a number in between negative 5 halves and 3 and 0 is the best there. So that would be a positive 5 and a negative 3. So that's going to be a negative all through here. And then a number to the right of 3 would be 5, maybe 6 or whatever. I'm just picking 5. And if you put 5 in there, you get a positive times a positive, and that's a positive. So now we know how every number behaves, and we want all the x values that make this left side be less than 0 or negative. So we're going to shade the negative region. And then you write it in interval notation. So that's actually a review problem. Um, from unit 1. Same thing with this one. You might want to pause the video and try it. I'll just keep going. We want to check the factors of 3, 1 and 3, and the factors of 20, 1 and 20, and then 2 and 10, and then 4 and 5. And if this factors, it'll factor into two binomials. And 3 is prime, so we know it's going to be 3x and x. And we want to check the outer and inner terms that subtract to be 7. Okay, so you check the numbers closer together and I'm, I'm doing it in my head as we go through. So I know that 12 and 5 is going to subtract to be 7. See, so 3x times 4 is 12x, 5 times x is 5x, 
12 take away 5 is 7, so we've got the right numbers. Now we just need to make sure we have the signs. We're subtracting, so it's going to be opposite signs. We need the 12 to be bigger, uh, is bigger than 5, so it needs to be positive and the 5 is negative. The 12 comes from 3x times 4, so that would be a plus 4. Then 5x comes from the negative 5 and the x. Okay, so then we're going to find the zeros. So we forget about this for a second. We just want to find where the zeros are. So 3x equals 5. That means x is 5 thirds and x is negative 4. Those are my zeros. So that's when I draw my number line. And that's when I'm going to put down the greater than or equal to 0 to remind me to think about that. So if I put negative 4 down and 5 thirds down, I get to color these in this time because it's greater than or equal to 0. And this is where uh, the value is equal to 0. All right, now a number to the left of negative 4 might be negative 5. So if I put a negative 5 in here, I get a negative 15 minus 5. That's a negative. Negative 5 in there, that's a negative 1. So negative times a negative is a positive. So everything to the left of negative 4 gives you a positive. If I try 0 to represent this region, I'll get a negative times a positive, which is a negative. If I try a number here, like 3, I'll get a 4, which is positive, and a 7, which is positive, so that's positive. And we want positives. So this time, all the x values to the left of negative 4 or to the right of 5 thirds will give you positive values. So this time the answer is negative infinity to negative 4 bracket, because we can include negative 4, bracket 5 thirds to infinity. Okay, so those are two review problems. Now we step into the polynomial inequality part. Okay, so the first one I'm going to give you says if the polynomial is already factored, then you can easily find the zeros and complete your sign analysis on a number line. Don't multiply this type of problem out. This is what we want. We want it in factored form, okay, so that you can find a zero. So if it's factored form, we can just skip and say, okay, the zeros are 4 and negative 3 and 1, and then we draw our number line, and we're going to analyze greater than 0. So make sure you put these in the right order, negative 3 and then 1 and then 4, and we have open circles on them because you can't, it doesn't say equal to zero. So you can't include those. So that's going to create four regions. And then you just do the same thing. We'll let negative four represent all the numbers to the left of negative three. If you put a negative four in here, you get a negative eight. So a negative number. If you put a negative four in here, you get a negative one. So a negative number. If you put a negative 4 in here, you get a negative 5 or a negative number. And a negative times a negative is a positive times a negative is a negative. So if you have an odd number of negatives, it's going to be a negative. Let's try the numbers between negative 3 and 1. Let's let 0 be that representative. That's going to give you a negative times a positive times a negative. So we have two negatives there. That's going to turn that region to all positives. Let's pick 3 here. So we have 3 minus 4, that's a negative. 3 plus 3, that's a positive. And 3 minus 1, that's a positive. So we have one negative there. So that's going to make that region all negative. And then finally, if we try 5, we'll have a positive times a positive times a positive, which is a positive. And we want greater than 0. That means we want these x values to give you positives, so we're going to shade the positive regions, which would be to the right of 4 and in between negative 3 and 1. So in interval notation, the solutions are from negative 3 to 1, parentheses, union, parentheses, 4 to infinity. Now another way you could do this is to remember what the leading term is, x cubed. So this behavior is going to be up down. So you could plot the zeros and then there's no multiplicity. So you would go straight through those. And then you can also see that this is above. So that's positive. That's 
above the x-axis, so that's positive. So you could do it the graphing method too. Be careful though because you might have some multiplicities that you have to deal with. Speaking of multiplicities, here's a polynomial. It's not quadratic. It's, it is factored, so you wouldn't need to factor. So we skip right to step 3 and that is find the zeros. So the zeros are 3 and negative 5. So we're ready to plot this number line out. So we'll put a negative 5 to the left and 3 to the right and it has to be an open circle because it doesn't say greater than or equal to 0 and that's where it equals 0. So we can include those and then we're going to check all the numbers to the left of negative 5. We'll let negative 6 be that representative. And notice that this is squared. So when you put negative 6 in here, you're going to get negative 9. But when you square a negative, it'll be positive. So that is positive. And then a negative 6 plus 5 is a negative. So every number in that region will be negative. Okay, if you try 0, when you put 0 in here, that's going to give you negative 3, but you're going to square a negative, which becomes a positive. Okay, so if you have a, a 2 a, a square, it's going to turn it positive. And then 0 plus 5 is positive, so every number in this region is positive. Now watch what happens here. If you try 4, 4 minus 3, that's positive. Square, it stays positive. 4 plus 5 is positive positive times a positive is a positive. And so for the first time we do not have the alternating signs that we've had every single time until now. Well what made that happen? Do you know? Yeah, the double root right there. The multiplicity of 2. So if you remember back from graphing polynomials what happened was the leading term is x squared times x. The leading term is 1x cubed. So it's going to be down up, but there's a multiplicity at the 3, so at x equals 3 there's going to be a bounce. So if you were to graph this, it would go straight through, start down here, straight through negative 5, and then bounce off of 3, and that's why this region is positive and that region is positive. Okay, so now what's the answer? We want to shade just the positive. So that's the middle region and the ending region, but you're going to have to hop over 3. So the solution would be negative 5 to 3, parentheses, union, 3 to infinity. But that's, the signs don't alternate if you have a, a multiplicity of 2 you'll, because, of the, because of the bound. So you can solve that with sign analysis or just be good at graphing uh, those. Okay, because there's not a lot to this lesson, I wanted to do some algebra practice. So we have this inequality where things are all multiplied, uh, terms are all separated and you might have to multiply some things out. So you might want to pause the video and see if you can practice, um, see if you can get this right. Because you're going to have to multiply all this out, set it to zero, factor, find the zeros, draw a number line, um, and then do some sign analysis. So you may want to try that. I'm going to try it. So you got negative 3x plus. Okay. Binomial squared. There it is again. We see it almost every day. So square double square, that's going to be x squared minus 4x plus 4. Again, if you're still lost on that, that's x minus 2 times x minus 2. And you foil that out, you get that. So you get this. And then you have your plus 9. Then you have your less than. Now we have to distribute that negative 2, and this is where people make a mistake sometimes. You get negative 2x squared plus 28 minus 19x. So now we have all these terms, and we need to get them all on the left. And I'm going to put them in descending order. So I have an x squared on the left and a negative 2x squared on the right. So if I move that negative 2x squared to the left, I get 3x squared. What's next? I have negative 3x, negative 4x, negative 19x. So let's move that negative 19x over here. So 19x minus 3x, that's 16x minus 4x, that's positive 12x. 
Let's see what else we have. We have a 4 and a 9, that's 13. And then this 28 comes over here at minus 28. So that's negative 15 is less than 0. And now you might notice that there's a GCF of 3, so I can factor that out to make it easier. Be careful, if it were negative, it would affect your sign analysis. Um, anyway, I'm just going to leave it there, and I'm going to factor that. That factors into x and x. Factors of 5 that subtract to be 4, well, that's 5 and minus 1. Okay, so we factored it. So we have zeros of negative 5 and 1, and they go on the number line. And we want them to be less than 0. Now, when we do sign analysis, let's open circle, open circle, be careful about that constant. If it's negative, people leave it off and make a mistake. So you might you can write it down to make sure you're remembering it. So we got 3 times negative 6 plus 5, that's a negative. Negative 6 minus 1, that's a negative. So a positive 3 times a negative times a negative is a positive. So everything in this region is positive. All right, let's try zero here. So we got that three. Don't want to forget it. If it were negative, it would change the sign. A zero here, that's positive. A zero here, that's negative. So that's a negative. And let's try three here. So we have a three, and then three plus five is eight. So that's positive. And three minus one, that's positive two. So three times a positive times a positive is going to give you positive numbers. And what do we want? we want less than, so we want negatives. These x values give you negatives. So the answer to this one is negative 5 comma 1 with parentheses. Hope you got that one right. That's it for polynomial inequalities. The biggest thing I could say is that if there's a constant, make sure you check the sign. If it's negative, you have to incorporate it in here. And then you might have multiplicity to deal with, so don't be shocked if you have um, you don't have alternating signs so practice those in the lab manual